The notion of responsible followership is actually quite a new idea, and it's really derived out of the responsible leadership literature, which is pretty new in and of itself. Uh, the responsible leadership literature is really the first leadership theory to focus on the multiple stakeholders of the firm. Most um, leadership theories have focused on just managing your group or your team or maybe even one-on-one -on -one interaction. And responsible leadership is looking at how do I consider a multi-stakeholder view? Communities, uh, government, uh, the environment, all sorts of constituents. And so extending that notion of responsible leadership is what does responsible followership look like? How might the follower conceive what they need to do as a follower and what might the leader expect the follower to bring to the workplace in an organization where we as a collective are taking a truly multi-stakeholder, uh, multi-constituent view? The responsible follower is going to have to bring more of themselves to work. Uh, we hear a lot about more rapid change. Organizations report that they're engaging in more rapid change than ever. If you look at the statistics, more change initiatives on average are being brought to the workplace every year. And the burden on thinking that the leader can direct and be, have all the mana, have all the knowledge, ha is, is uh, increasingly a false dichotomy. And so when we look at employee engagement, about 15% of employees report being highly engaged about 15% report being actively disengaged, and that great middle, about 65 or 70 percent, haven't made their minds up yet uh, whether they're going to be engaged or not. So responsible followership is an opportunity to ask people to bring more of them, their whole selves to work. And so when we get down to what are the qualities that one needs to make, be a responsible follower, it's things like uh, having an active moral compass, saying that I have an ethical perspective on these particular issues. I know things because I'm now going to be outward looking. So one of the things we'd ask for in responsible followership is thinking about multiple stakeholders, bringing that perspective to the leader, whether you consider it challenging or coaching or consulting with the leader. So I think when we think about what an organizational system would look like that developed responsible followers, uh, one of the things we have to look at is do we spend any money or time asking people to develop the followership role. If you Google leadership development right now, you'll find that, for example, in the U.S. alone, there's $20 billion a year spent on leader development. If you Google follower development, do you know what you'll find? You'll find nothing. Part of what we have to think about when we think about developing responsible followers is what is the spend on followership? and then drilling down to those qualities of what a responsible follower looks like, encouraging them to bring more of themselves to the workplace, their own moral compass, encouraging them to have foresight, to be thinking towards the future, something that we've typically delegated to the leader as the knowing individual. Well, when we think about the leadership system as the leader, the follower, and a context, and we're co-constructing change, we're dealing with what Heifetz would call really wicked problems, adaptive challenges that there's no easy solution for. Then a responsible organization is going to say we've got to develop responsible leaders and responsible followers in equal parts, and then challenge leaders to let the followers do what responsible followership looks like and encourage the followers to do those things that look like responsible followership. When we think about whether responsible followership puts more burden on the employees, we've really got to think about what do they consider a burden. So it could well be that it's a tremendous burden to show up to work and be told what to do and not feel like you have much autonomy. There's a guy named Studs Terkel who writes, uh, he's an author, philosopher, he wears many hats, that work is the search for meaning while in search of your daily bread. And when you think about what we're asking from employees with respect to responsible followership, we're asking them to bring more of themselves to work, to have more opinions, to share more openly, to share more freely. And so if you think about what most people do in terms of getting meaning, it's from being impactful. It's from getting better. The golfer wants to get their score down. The tennis player wants to get more balls in play. An employee comes to work in search of meaning not just in search of their daily bread. And so when we talk about what responsible followership looks like, we are challenging employees to reconceive the follower role, 
But that's why we have to do that in tandem with leadership development. We have to coach leaders to solicit these sorts of behaviors from followers so that they cre create a safe place to be a responsible follower. But what you should get collectively is a responsible organization that is more agile, is more adaptive, uh, challenge it, takes on challenges more rapidly, uh, is more willing to admit, I got it wrong, let's do something different. In short, to be the sort of agile firm we need in the 21st century. I think the practical steps an organization can take to encourage responsible followership is to sit down and develop, as we do with most things, a set of values around responsible followership, uh, organizational systems that would encourage responsible followership, reward systems that would encourage responsible followership. I mean, can you imagine a performance appraisal form that says, how many times did you challenge your leader in a constructive way uh, this quarter or this month or whatever the performance appraisal window might be, and that both the leader and the follower would recognize and agree that constructive challenges are a positive thing. Uh, we tend to not sort of reward the types of behaviors. Again, we, we largely have organizational systems that are still built on the industrial model coming out of the 60s where you could rotely tell employees who weren't especially educated uh, what to do. We have evolved some. I don't mean to say we're stuck in the 60s. But if you look at what we reward and how we measure performance, uh, when it comes to the notion of the follower role, it's still largely focused on compliance uh, rather than constructive uh, challenge and teamwork. So I think if we think about it from a systematic standpoint, we'll say, how do we refocus the HR spin on at the same time developing notions of responsible followers and followers and responsible followers uh, and leaders? And if we can get to some sort of collective set of values, if we can reward and reinforce those types of behaviors, then we're much more likely to get responsible followership.